Eh. So, basically, this is how Bold Fighter works. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start. And obviously, in C tier, we have Arden again. Don't. Just don't. You already know why not. But if you really want to, don't. So, moving on to A tier, we have Drop Gwendolyn and Sheena again. Although this is kind of a disclaimer, it... Pretty much everybody on this list is A and above, just on the sole fact that basically as long as the enemy isn't having like a gem weapon or something like that, you can pretty much kill anything with the bold fighter build with any of these characters. Like, they pretty much wipe out the whole cast just about, or at least come really really close. But that said, I still don't recommend it for these three characters solely on the grounds that their base attack is just a little bit too low to really take advantage of it. Well, it's... Even then, I mean, they can still get away with it. They'll take about at least 90, 95% of the cast with uh, whatever they do. They can just quad into a proc, or they can quad into a double proc with Moonbow. It'll be like you put on a brave, put on a brave weapon, then you put a Moonbow on. When you initiate, you'll initiate with Moonbow, get hit, then you'll initiate with Moonbow twice. Basically, it's pretty insane. That's pretty much one of the biggest things about a uh, bold fighter in general. It's just to slap a brave weapon on there. And then proc with Ignis. It's basically everyone is Arden. Which is why Arden's only C tier. Because he can already do that. So he doesn't need bold fighter in the first place. But you get the idea. So also in A tier we have Winter Alyssa. Because again. She's just Sheena with three more attack. Essentially. And that's not even a lot. It's like a base of what? 33? She'll get the 36, which is still lower than, like, what everyone else above this tier can do, so. It's a decent idea, and she does come with Bold Fighter, so it's not too bad to just leave it on her, but you'll do a lot better if you pass it on to somebody above. So, moving on to A tier, we have Amelia. Now, Amelia is a strange one, because she can run either Bold Fighter or Vengeful Fighter and do just fine with both. But for Amelia, she comes with a slaying lance, so you can probably just get an easy double into something like an Ignis proc or a Lacey's proc, whichever, whichever stat happens to be highest for you, depending on your IV. But it helps because she's also naturally fast, so even with that, so even with the brave weapon, she can still like have a little bit of an enemy phase and prevent, and prevent being doubled a lot. And then we have Winter Robin, who is basically just a slightly stronger Gwendolyn, so he'll have a little bit of an easier time. But he still doesn't have quite the ability to just perfect the entire cast, so there's that. But he's there, and he pretty much has the same initials as Gwendolyn, just a little bit better as far as the player phase goes. And then last on this list, we have Hector and Zephiel. What makes them so interesting is you already have them built for uh, for an enemy phase, so giving them bold fire lets them also have a really strong player phase as well. With Hector's armads, he pretty much gets a guaranteed double on both player phase and enemy phase much to a pretty good effect and since his base attack is already so high even just getting a, just being able to get a free double is just pretty much amazing so and it kills a pretty good chunk of the cast on its own so he doesn't really need to do the brave axe thing and then there's Zephiel one of the cool things about Zephiel is just that his weapon has the built-in threat and defense it's not as great as it used to be but if you set it up right you pretty much get a double into like two pretty free and huge attacks and it's pretty nice it's nothing crazy but you'll at least be able to get a bonfire proc out and boy does it hurt plus you have people who decide to just well you know what i don't have this encounter maybe i'll just give them a brave sword and people do that so that's also an option on him for some reason so you don't lose too much for taking off the exact 
compared to taking off our mats. And finally, we get into S tier. And as you can see, Black Knight tops both of the tier lists for this because he's just that fucking good. One of the really cool things about Black Knight is just how versatile he is, just for being an armor unit with distant counter built into his web. But yeah, his bold fighter set is pretty, pretty broken. Like, so you already have steady breath, and then you're also gonna have quick and pulse on. So that means if you get hit in the enemy phase, you're pretty much guaranteed your Black and Lunar the moment you turn around and hit them. Which me, which is which is part of why Vengeful Fighter isn't as great on him as I would like it to be, because he's already broken enough on enemy phase, and then Vengeful Fighter doesn't make him any more broken than he already is. However, with Bold Fighter, he gets access to an instant Black Luna on his player phase as well. The only way to stop it would be something like Swordbreaker. And seeing as Black Luna already pretty much takes out almost the entire cast, you can tell exactly why he's gonna be this high up on the list. Giving him the ability to prop Black Luna on both phases just from anything he touches or anything touching him, which means you pretty much have to one-shot him if you're, one of, if you're gonna stop him. Next we have Winter, Chrome, and Effie. What makes them stand out so much is with their brave weapons, they already have such a ridiculously high base attack that pretty much being able to quad with that is all is just straight overkill. It's so overkill that you pretty much wipe out the entire cast no matter what they're wearing on them. The only way to actually stop them is to have a breaker on and even then, you might not even survive the first two hits because they pretty much get a free moonbow product just from initiating on you. Pretty much can't let either of these units initiate on you without having a significantly huge color advantage with them. And even then, it's gonna take a lot to just not die to it because they're, they're just ridiculous with what they can do. It's, they're, they're just that broken. Like to say that they have the best player phase in a game be an understatement. And next on S tier we have Halloween Henry and Winter Tharja. Now what makes these two such a broken pair is, okay, put it like this. Alright, imagine Nino, right? Nino's already really good with her blade tone and everybody knows exactly why. With her ridiculous speed being able to double just about anything and kill anything with a blade tone even, even if they have the type advantage. So yeah, let's take Nino, put her in armor, then give her access to emblem buffs, probably a little more extra, and that's pretty much what they are. Oh, and this time their doubles are now guaranteed, so they don't actually need speed to double. And there are a lot of units that Nino normally cannot kill because she can't double them, but if she could, she would absolutely destroy them. This is pretty much removing that restriction. On top of having the cooldown removal of the blade tome being basically nullified, meaning that they also get proc skills, which is something Nino can't do. Not without multiple infantry pulses anyway. Which is another thing that just makes these two insane on player phase, is having an uncheckable blade tome. And then lastly there's Halloween Jacob. Now, basically, imagine Bride Cordelia. You know. That one extremely annoying archer, or no, wait, no one deals with her anymore. It's not all about Brave Lynn. And every idiot who puts Brave Bow on her. So, yeah, imagine that, but imagine if Brave Lynn could actually quad. Well, she can sort of quad, but you, you get what I mean. Basically, guaranteeing that quad. It's basically the Effie and Chrom situation, but not as high as an attack stat, but it's range, so it's extremely annoying. But yeah, that's pretty much everyone on this list. Being able to guarantee their doubles or guarantee their quads just puts them in such an insane place that it's really hard to argue for using anything else on your B slot if you're going for something player phase related. So that was my list for both Bold Fighter and Vengeful Fighter. This is pretty much more or less a priority than so much as a tier list. Like it's obvious some it's obvious some units want Vengeful Fighter more than Bold Fighter. So yeah, that's all pretty much in the video. Um, you know, come hit me up on Discord, man. If you ever have any more questions, I do read all of my YouTube comments, or at least I try to. And you know, if you got tips or whatever, if you got like other suggestions you want to throw in, you know, I'm down to listen. Just uh, you know, post them. And yeah, later.